Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I uh, hope you're good. I am great. Happy Terrarium Tuesday. Uh, I thought before going on with the series too much further, it would be a pretty good idea to actually just talk about some plants that are nice for terrariums. I don't have like a list, like a top 10 or anything like that. I'm mostly going off of what's easier to come by and what I have on hand. When it comes to terrarium plants, what makes something a terrarium plant? That's kind of the first thing to think about. That does largely depend on your terrarium. Is it a closed system? That means you're going to want something that likes a lot of humidity, typically. If it's something very large and open, then you could go with much bigger plants. I prefer terrarium plants that stay smaller because they're less maintenance. But unfortunately, no matter what, pretty much anything is going to require some kind of pruning, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, right? That just means that they're growing well. I like to watch plants grow. So sometimes if something is a super dwarf or something like that, you don't see much out of it. Sometimes that's not as exciting, right? Oh, that's my take on it anyway. So to start things off, Ficus pumula. There's two different plants here. They're the same plant though, just one's variegated, one is not, and um, very unstable variegation in this growth right here. That happens, they revert sometimes. And that's an easy enough thing to fix if you get one of these and it starts to revert, meaning that it starts to lose that variegation, I would just go ahead and cut this probably, I'd say right around here. I'd wanna cut it where that variegation's still really strong. I don't have my snippers with me, so we're just gonna just use my fingers. That works fine too. You know, when we hear ficus, we think big trees, four plants, something you see in an office space maybe, but you know, the ficus family is very, very, very large. And uh, these are a type that is a crawler, a creeper. They'll crawl along the surface and make a ground cover. So if you have a terrarium that's like an aquarium type with a wall in it, if you plant this near where the wall meets the ground, this will even start to creep up along the top. And that looks really cool. It'll go up along that backside and sort of fill in the space. It looks really neat. It's a very full, very lush plant. They are vigorous growers once they start to settle in and get going. So they'll require pruning from time to time. And that's okay. That's easy enough to do. You saw it just with my fingers. It just pops right off if you don't have snippers, though it is always best to use clippers. You get nice clean cuts that way. They like bright indirect light, moderate to high humidity. Inside of a terrarium, they'll do just fine. And you can actually grow these in somewhat drier conditions as long as you make sure that they don't dry out in the soil for very long, like very long at all. But in a terrarium setting, they'll do well because they're versatile, it's a versatile plant. And these are extremely easy to propagate too. So you can always take these little bits and pieces that you cut off the plant or snap off the plant, sort of pop off some of those lower leaves and stick this into some moist soil and it will take off. You can also just do a water culture stick it into a glass with some water it'll take off that way and in general if the soil's nice and moist and i mean in a terrarium setting that should be the case if it's a closed one if this is even just in contact with the soil you can see the little roots there where those nodes are where the leaf meets the stem those will start to root out and take off like i said a very vigorous plant grows like crazy and like it there it will be a higher maintenance plant when it comes to pruning and making sure that it doesn't absolutely take over which i think is worth it given how easy they are to grow the lush appearance that you get from them and just, overall they're just fantastic plants okay and then the next plant i don't actually have on me the uh pilea oh wait no 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 i have a pilea there we go this is pilea glauca the glauca describing the more silvery tone to the foliage really pretty plants another one that's going to be more of a ground cover they have really dense compact tiny little foliage this one's going to be fairly similar to the ficus pumula just in the sense that it is going to spread very vigorously it is a little bit more fragile like just kind of handling it a little bit too roughly can make the foliage and the stems fall apart so it's going to be a little bit more delicate with I do appreciate that higher humidity though that they would have in a terrarium moist air moist soil bright and direct light they'll do well easy plants that's another thing i really like about these is in a terrarium setting these are pretty simple to grow it's not always the easiest for people outside of a terrarium these are fairly easy to overwater and underwater sometimes it can be difficult kind of finding a happy place with them i generally have found that this is one of those plants where i have to just kind of like step back and give it some space and water it like i would a standard house plant and it will be okay but if i dote over these too much then that's when things become problematic for me the tiny compact growth makes this an excellent foreground plant in a terrarium so it will make a nice carpet that sort of covers things goes around rocks and stones and 
twigs and everything you have behind it will stand up and pop a little bit more because of the silvery glaucous tone to the foliage. See what I'm talking about? <laughs> that pilea, they can be a little bit delicate. And that one got a little bit on the dry side because I'm doing a DE treatment. That's DE powder throughout the entire growth space. And when I do that, I water heavily and then let the plants sit for a day. Then I treat with the DE powder and then I wait about four or five days till I rinse that off of everything. So we're at the end of that right now. So they're a little bit on the dry side, ready for another watering. That's why there's a handful of leaves in my hands right here. You gotta let that DE powder sit for a minute in order for it to work. It's gotta sit for a few days. Philodendrons. There are lots and lots of different types of philodendrons that you could use in a terrarium. There's one called Little Phil, which is what I thought this one was when I got it. Turns out it's a moonlight, which does get much, much, much larger. So uh, not a permanent candidate for a terrarium unless it's a very, 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 very large terrarium. But the Little Phil does have a slightly similar appearance to this philodendron. The foliage is going to be a little bit more of a deep green. The moonlight has this sort of lime chartreuse color to its newer foliage. Smaller philodendrons, another great option in a terrarium. You can put these like in pockets along the back walls. You, this will crowd out anything you have planted too close to it because like I said, this one's going to get very big. But if you can find the little fill, which still gets fairly large, but not huge, not like a typical philodendron, that would be a good option. And there are tons of different types of philodendrons to choose from. Uh, this one has a little piece of some sort of succulent in it. I don't know, it's a sedum of some sort that was not labeled and it spread over into it. But sedums also, as long as it's a low grower, they make an excellent option for a terrarium because not all sedums need really dry conditions. Like there are sedums that we grow here as a perennial like the Pachysandra. That's a sedum that can take the lots of precipitation and moisture and it would do well in a terrarium. It's with good drainage of course but that's one that would do well in a terrarium and there are other types of sedums that will follow suit with that. Not all sedums need super dry conditions. Okay. I'll bust out my tray of terrarium plants here. Not everything in here are things that I would necessarily recommend, but everything on this back wall, fantastic. These are Syngoniums. They're all sports of the Syngonium Podophyllum. Uh, if you've been watching the Terrarium Tuesday videos, I'm a very, very big fan of Syngoniums. I use them in pretty much everything I've been doing, and that's partially because I did a plant order a few months ago and just went kind of crazy ordering the Syngoniums. I almost ordered two more this morning, and I stopped myself because I only have so much room for the Syngoniums, but they make excellent terrarium plants. Now, it is important to find the right variety, though. It's just your typical Syngonium podophyllum. Those will get quite large, but as I mentioned, there are some that stay smaller. These are all from a terrarium supply shop, and they were listed as staying around eight inches. I unfortunately don't remember the names on these. They were shipped without labels, which was something that really irritated me quite a bit, but one of them is called Randy, one of them is called Candy, one of them is called Mary, and the other one is a Neon Robusta. And I could get on the website and narrow it down and figure it out, but that's not the point. Any Syngonium podophyllum, if the description says it stays under a certain size, whatever size is appropriate for you and that you like, they do great in terrariums. The Super Dwarf Pixie, or Mini Pixie is what it's called, that's my favorite for terrariums. It is just tiny and adorable. It only gets like, I think, four to six inches high at the absolute max. It will require some trimming as it spreads. You'll have to kind of dig up its offshoots and keep it in check that way. But otherwise, it is just, it's just darling, an adorable plant. The ones that I received weren't looking great, and like within 24 hours of putting them into a terrarium, they already start to look better for me. Which is just them responding well to the humidity, would be my guess, but they really, for me, grow much more vigorously in a terrarium setting. That's specifically with the mini pixie. The others are pretty easy, like whether they're in a terrarium or not, the mini pixie for me, just, it, they thrive under glass. They do so much better and one of the things that's so fantastic about them look at all the different variations in the foliage they can be dark they can be pink they can have just variegation there's even this kind of chocolatey brown color over here i could talk about syngoniums all day so we're just gonna keep it at that find you some nice short syngoniums you won't regret it they are so pretty to have an aquarium one of my favorites actually they would probably are my favorites Oh, and I don't have it in front of me, but Peperomias. There are different varieties. I really like the Peperomia Ripple. I put one in a terrarium just like a week or so ago. I've used them in terrariums before. They have that smaller stature to them, a really thick 
waxy foliage, which is one of the things we, you know, love about peperomias. Not all, there are a lot of different types of peperomias. Thick foliage, though, that you get with the ripple, I think just makes it stand apart from other plants. It's really waxy all the way around. Especially when you have moss growing around underneath it, it makes that foliage stand out even more. Beautiful, beautiful plants. And next up are the ferns. That is such a broad statement. Ferns. There's hundreds, thousands of different types of ferns. This is a bird's nest fern. They'll do okay in a terrarium for a while. Bird's nest ferns will, of course, outgrow a terrarium, uh, but it will take them some time. They're not the fastest growing plants. And there's different varieties. There's the crispy wave and the, the others. There's a lot of different varieties. Crispy wave is the first one that came to mind. It has more rippled foliage and there's variegated bird's nest ferns like you can see I have back here. They would do well in a terrarium as well. The uh, hearts fern, the tongue fern, they do really well in terrariums also. Just about any fern you can think of, as long as it'll stay small enough and fit in a terrarium, is probably going to do well. Well, not just any. There are, of course, some like special ferns out there and kinds that really do need a lot of airflow around them. But what you can typically find available at garden shops and nurseries, they will do well for you. Fetonias. This little gem here is the Frankie Fetonia. It has absolutely beautiful foliage. Isn't that foliage so incredibly stunning? I like the ripply texture that it has on the sides. It has that reddish pink color mixed in with the green veining. Fetonias are also called nerve plants. They will stay shorter on the shorter end. The less light they get, the more they'll reach out for more light and sort of stretch out like you can see this piece doing here. But if they're getting some pretty bright light for a few hours a day, then they should have a more compact growth. The, it's a uh, larger leaf plant when they're not in a terrarium, but typically when a Fetonia gets into a high moisture, high light situation, you'll start to see the foliage start to shrink down on them. And there are lots of different types of Fetonias. The Alba Venus is what I'm referring to where they tend to get the smaller leaves. The Fetonias will stay low, they'll spread and make everything else really pop in the terrarium <laughs> because they add such an intense contrast to everything. Whatever surrounding them, is really going to stand out because nothing else really looks like a Fetonia. Except for, I guess, polka dot plants, which also would do well in a terrarium. I don't have any here to talk about, but that's a good option. Oh, and definitely don't want to forget about air plants, the Tillandsias. They are excellent plants for terrariums. You do kind of have to watch out with them because things can get to be too moist with the Tillandsias typically. You can see here how this air plant has sort of a silvery, whitish, hairy appearance to it. Typically, an air plant that has that coverage on it doesn't like to be very moist, at least not for too long, but they'll do well in a high humidity environment. But that furry appearance usually lets you know that they don't need to be watered as often as one that has more of a shiny appearance to it, which I don't even have any of right now. Pretty much all the Tillandsias I have here, even the Ionatha, yeah, they all have that pretty same characteristic to them. That doesn't mean they don't like to be watered. I just mean in contrast to Tillandsias that will have more of a shiny appearance to them. Essentially a hairy Tillandsia is usually a little bit more forgiving of drier conditions. Doesn't mean they like it, but they can be a little bit more forgiving of it. But if the ones you have have a really intense sort of sheen to them, those are the types of Tillandsias that really are going to prefer to stay humid at all times and they, if they get dried out for too long, they don't bounce back anywhere near as well as the the hairy guys but they're great there's tons of different tillandsias to choose from you can put them on sticks you can mount them to the back walls of a terrarium and if you put them on just like put them on a stick then like once a week take it out soak it in some water for a few minutes throw it back in the terrarium and that's it you don't have to pour the water directly onto them in fact i usually think it's best not to pour water directly onto these in a terrarium because a typical terrarium doesn't have much airflow, and if water does settle and collect inside the centers of these for too terribly long, it can cause them to rot. And by soaking them, you then have the control to take it out and shake some of that water out of the middle. It's a pretty decent way to avoid having to worry about them rotting from too much water sitting in the middle, and it's easy to do it that way. It's not a big deal. You may still have to add water into your terrarium at times to keep things nice and moist and humid, but you don't necessarily have to spray these directly. And if you do, just make sure it's a fine mist and uh, that not too much water is collecting in the center for too terribly long. Pretty much goes the same for the last plant here. This is a cryptanthus, or really just bromeliads. Cryptanthus are a type of bromeliad. I have a whole care video on these guys on the channel. And then just bromeliads in general. So you can kind of see some differences here. See how the cryptanthus, the foliage, 
is a little bit more dull, very beautiful and colorful, whereas this Neo Jorelia right here is more shiny. So this one right here really wants that high humidity. The Cryptanthus, they can be grown among succulents. They can take drier conditions, but they'll also do very well in a high humidity environment as long as, same thing with the Tolensias, you just don't want nasty water to settle in here for too long. With the Bromeliads, they can have the water in the center. They even sometimes need it in the center. But without airflow in a Cryptanthus, that could be problematic. You wouldn't want to sit in there for too terribly long. So if you do notice too much water pooling in there, maybe the plant's not looking great, you can take a paper towel and just sort of wad it up and dap it down in there and it will wick out some moisture from the center. And that will help if that becomes an issue. That's not something you would probably need to worry about with something like a Neogerelia. The Cryptanthus, lots of different types, but they typically stay smaller. They'll make a good foreground plant. You can put them on the back walls. And that's really the same thing with the Neogerelias. I don't remember what variety this is, but there are several different varieties. I want to say that this is a uh, Tigra crossed with a Rubra, I think is what that was labeled. I can't say for sure, but even looking at this one, you can see it's kind of thirsty. I need to get this one into glass because it's just an offshoot that was sent to me with those um, Syngoniums that I got a few months ago. And it's been a little bit hard keeping it hydrated. So this one is one that particularly is going to do much better in a terrarium setting for me. But since it's not potted up, there's no moisture around it ever. It's just sitting out in the open. So that's one that would benefit greatly from being inside of a terrarium. Whereas a Cryptanthus, they're in general just very easy to grow plants. Very forgiving. I uh, planted one up last year with a fern and that was a, just an absolutely stunning terrarium. Still have it. I took the fern out because it outgrew it. That's what, you know, happens when you put a maiden hair fern in a small terrarium. But the Cryptanthus is still going strong. They're really fantastic plants. For the most part, pretty much everything that I talked about, all the plants in this video are ones that should be pretty easy to keep in a terrarium. That's kind of the whole point of why I'm using them in the Terrarium Tuesday videos. And really everything I mentioned in this video should all be great in a terrarium. I wanted to keep it to plants that are easier to grow, fairly easy to find. I've been having trouble finding the little phil philodendron. I thought that's that's what this was when I got it, but turned out I was wrong. It's a moonlight, but that's okay. Still a pretty plant. Otherwise, most of these you can just find it even just like your general hardware stores. I know I got this Fetonia from a local Lowe's Home Improvement. Same thing with the variegated Ficus Pumula that's back here. Cryptanthus I see sometimes birds nest ferns all the time. The Syngonium podophyllums, those I usually have to order, but I do see there are the illusion ones. That's a there's a few different types that are pretty easy to find and fairly common. And I think that those do stay a little bit smaller than just your typical like white butterfly syngonium podophyllum. And I do know there are people who have been doing terrariums for years and their <laughs> basic mentality is that if it fits, it'll work. Can't argue with that. People who are experienced with their plants, they know when it's time to pull things and switch them out and swap them out and take something from being a terrarium to just being a potted house plant. That's all really just personal preference. For me, I usually like to stick with things that stay smaller or will be smaller for a longer <laughs> period of time. Like I said, the bird's nest fern will outgrow a terrarium, no doubt about it, but it'll take them a little while. They don't always grow very quickly, but they do grow faster in a terrarium environment with that high humidity that does get them moving a lot more quickly, which is fun. That's one of the things that's so great about bird's nest fern. It can take a drier environment, even though they really prefer a nice moist and humid environment. That's the just love a versatile plant. Comment down below. What are some of your favorite plants to use in terrariums? Tips, tricks, suggestions. Always appreciated. Love talking to everybody and hearing from everybody. There will probably be a part two to this video because there are like just even as I'm sitting here, more and more plants keep coming to mind that would work so well in a terrarium. There are lots of different types of small orchids. The Neophanesias would be fantastic. Even some of the smaller lady slipper papule pedulum type orchids would do well. The jewel orchids are fantastic. And other plants like Crescias, Tradescansis. There are tons and tons of options. This is just, it's just what I had here. And plants that I usually would recommend for a terrarium because they're easier to come by and they're easy to grow. No terrarium build today. As you can see, getting moving with the terrarium builds again next week. Like I mentioned before, I think I mentioned I am going to be running out to some terrarium type shops to grab just a few more little things 
it's not the kind of thing where you usually have all the supplies sitting around one time once you've been gathering for a while or maybe you have some really great shops around you. I usually have to go to several different places to find everything I need. So next week, we get back to building some terrariums. Um, if anybody else wants to do this Terrarium Tuesday thing, hop on board. I'm going to tag in Pam at Pam's Planty Things. So, Pam, you go ahead, do a Terrarium Tuesday. That would be fun. Just fun, good times. It's a nice way to get through the winter blues. Everybody, we're stuck inside. I mean, I don't know when you're watching this, but this video goes up in January, and it, it's, it's, it hasn't been fun. I want to go outside and garden, but since I can't, terrariums. It's a decent compromise. You get to do a little bit of gardening indoors. It's rewarding. They're fun to look at, and there's just so much diversity with the plants. Okay, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, and everything's just going wonderfully for you. All my social media is down in the description of the video. I'm on Instagram more than anything else, and don't forget to do that whole YouTube thing. You could like the video, subscribe, hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. It all makes a really big difference for the channel. So thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, time for me to hop off. I'm gonna go hit up some terrarium shops, see what else I can find. I hope everybody's doing well. And of course, as always and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.